reflections eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and I rate your reflections are for me He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us By the grace in his eyes And grace serves an ocean For oh, we're all singing So heaven and earth meet Like an unforeseen kiss My heart turns violently Inside of my chest I don't have time To maintain these regrets When I I think about the way he loves us.
show me the visions that only you can give. And I love it when you speak to me. Yeah. I want to know you. I love to know you. Everything else I count as lost. And I want to to know you no matter what the cost no matter what the cost is nothing compared to Hallelujah. You want to love Jesus with everything we got, don't we? Amen. He loves us with everything he's got. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, you can be seated. And uh, i got my glasses. Hallelujah. Um, you want to share? We're, uh, we're um, live on Jessica's Facebook page. Facebook did some update last night that has done something to our page. Um, we don't know what. But we are live out that way. So if you want to share with your friends, um, you can do that. Okay, so praise the Lord that we, we are out there somehow. They, I'm not sure what, what they're doing, but they're doing something. I, I saw a thing last night, Facebook and Apple are having it out because um, of privacy issues. Because how Facebook generates money is by tracking everything you do and then selling your preferences to other companies <clears throat> and then target you with those ads. <clears throat> so they're tracking everything you do. Apple's trying to shut that down. Okay. Cap, can we pull the mains down on these lights? Soften them a little bit. It's a pretty, <clears throat> pretty harsh. Um, like I see little stick people out there. More. There we go. There we go. That's good. That's good. Is that still lit up? Am I still lit up enough? No? Push it back up a little bit. All righty. Well, we're so glad to have everybody today. We're going um, to delay sending the kids out for just a few minutes because we're going to, you know, we're going to receive the offering. We're going to talk about, our, um, about something this morning um, that's important. Praise the Lord. But we are glad to have you this morning. Jesus is Lord. If you need an offering envelope, go, raise your hand. go ahead and raise your hand. Joe's out in the aisle. He's got the envelopes. And um, you can go ahead and get, have that ready for your offering. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Can everybody say amen? Hallelujah. You know, the general, the general time and offering of the local church is necessary for us to function and operate and to do the work of God. Um, you know, without that, the church can't function. The, the tithe was to be brought into the storehouse uh, when we read the Bible. Um, some people say, well, that was Old Testament. Man, have you not read Hebrews? Now, last time I checked, Hebrews was in the New Testament. And the Bible says that there... 
he receiveth the tithe. Talk about Jesus is the high priest who receives it now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So it is a New Testament biblical doctrine. I've had people come to me and go, I don't believe in tithing. Well, you don't believe in being blessed according to the Word of God, do you? No, it's not New Testament. You, you have to be just dishonest not to see it that it's in the New Testament. Thank you for your enthusiasm. So anyway, thank, we, we thank all of you for tithing and giving to the local church and special offerings beyond the tithe, uh, help, you know, because it helps run the church. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, we set out last summer talking about the need to uh, raise money for building fund and uh, set a goal of 65000 We have never, ever been in the position as a church to go look for anything and have money to do it with. Well, the Lord just kind of put it in our heart to start moving in that direction. Amen? And so um, let, let's go ahead and put our, our thermometer up, our, um, our, go, our uh, current thermometer, because this is what we're at. Uh, I mean, we, we haven't done bad. I mean, you know, guys, that's, that, that mark there is 20,000. So we're at 21,000 right now, which, you know, since last summer, that's not bad. Do y'all think that's bad? I don't think it's bad. I mean, you know, we've, we've had people, you know, uh, outside of our church give us money and so forth. And, um, you know, so we, um, but this got impressed more that we need to kind of go ahead and say to the church, let's kind of do like we did with the debt destruction. Let's, let's commit to, you know, um, whatever you put, God puts in your heart. There's no pressure here. We're not going to force you. We're not going to go, uh, give me your arm. You know, how much blood can we get out of the turnip and stuff? This has to be of your heart. You know, because if it doesn't, then, then what? This is why I don't believe in those those um, um, those campaigns where they bring these companies in, who come in and they train your people on how to go put the pressure on your people and squeeze the turnip. Okay, I, I don't like that. You know, um, and and the idea of you know Dick and Ellie showing up at um, Linda and Karen's house, going, "How much can you sacrificially?" Because they're, they're tra they train them on the techniques of getting money out of you. And I just don't think that's the way it should be done. I think it should be the heart of the people. Amen? That want to see us get into our own place, get into a building, that kind of thing, have our own ways of doing stuff. And um, praise the Lord. So what we're going to ask you to do is I want you to prayerfully consider how much you want to commit to. Okay? Uh, on a regular basis to give into this. And, um, you know, praise the Lord. Uh, so that we can we can kind of move in this direction and have money. What, what? A special hallelujah, Graham. Oh. Is it my birthday? No, my birthday is August. Not, not neatly. Oh. Oh, wow. Hallelujah, Graham. Urgent. Stop. Announce immediately. Stop. Large contribution made to Faith and Victory Church. Stop. Building fund now stands. Melanie, can you put that other slide up? Stop. Stop. At $65,000. <laughs> I thought y'all would be more excited than that. <laughs> so we're celebrate. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> what was that, Brother Bill? <laughs> You got set up, didn't you, Bill? We had to get the slides to them. Praise the Lord. We now have $65,000 in the building fund. Hallelujah. 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 Should I give them the other, the other news? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, so, we are now in a position to find a place and make an offer. Okay. Glory to God. <clears throat> and um, we, are, we are excited. 
Now, the, I think we just need to keep giving to the building fund because, it's, you know, um, as, as things progress and, and so forth, we're going to need money. <coughs> but we are at 65 that, that means we can make an offer of $325,000. Oh, so $350,000. And have the down payment 20% for it. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Uh, are are y'all in shock or y'all just? <laughs> the largest single gift in the history of the church. And I'm telling you, we've had people in our church that that were millionaires, and God has blessed us and brought that money in, and, um, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we're ecstatic. Yeah, Brother Bill, are you? <laughs> Did we get y'all good? <laughs> we were thinking about how can we handle this? I am. This week, that other offer, that other one was asked after, after last, last Sunday. Yeah, we had $21,010 in building fund after last Sunday. So, we now have $65,000 in building fund. That's… That's, 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 that's $44,000 anyway you look at. Actually, we got 44110 because somebody's already given $100 this morning to the building fund. <laughs> so we got $65,110 in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is nobody going to get up and dance? <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're going to our seat. Okay. Take the hallelujah gram with you. Oh, we got the balloons back there. Okay. I, I, I don't know what to think about y'all. Y'all just kind of sitting out there like dumbfounded. Praise the Lord. So, um, I really don't know what to say about all the stuff I was saying before about, you know, making a commitment to give to the building. But, um, however, you know, in order to do, to, to do buy, we, we're going to need money, more, even more money just, you know, to do stuff. So, um, we, we want to keep continue giving to the building fund and continue to grow it. But we, um, I've been here for a long time, and not once in this time have we been in this position. Not one time since we've been in Greensboro have we been at this position where we could do something. Never. Um, and when we were leasing all the time, we didn't have the money anyway, but we were also always in the middle of a lease. We were. We were always in the middle of a lease, and you, we, there was no way we could do anything because you had two or three years left on the lease, and you would have to pay that out. Well, that, at $4,000 a month, that would have been, you know, $40,000, $48,000 a year you'd have to pay out. We've we, we don't have any kind of lease. We don't have any kind of commitments. We don't have anything, and we got 65 grand in the bank for the building fund. Okay, and uh, we do have some spare now that we didn't, we've never had before to kind of have a buffer on operating expenses. We've always been, I mean, for years we were operating week to week. At, we were operating bill to bill due date. Get the, get the offering on Sunday, get it in the bank on Monday, and pay the bill Monday afternoon. You know, trying to keep, trying to, you know, now we're debt free. There's no debt. We've got money in the bank. And we have no obligations that will keep us from moving to, moving and doing stuff for, for what we want to do. We're in the best place financially as a church and strategically as a church we've ever been right now. Hallelujah. You want to say, are you just, are you hanging out? Okay, waiting for the children. All right. Now, kids, y'all can go. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you pray about what you want to do, you do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
That would be for more money down, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. It's, it would still go towards whatever. You know, if we need more money down, if we needed, you know, that, right. All that would keep going into that. Okay. But money designated for the building fund will go towards a building. Okay. It won't go towards operating expenses and that kind of stuff. Okay. If that's what it's going to be designated to. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and give. You know, offer down below. Raise your hand. Y'all can raise your hand. Now, you're not such a stupid. You can't raise your hand. Okay. Hallelujah. Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. And um, we're going to give it to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the giving. We thank you the people are blessed. And we thank you that heaven's windows are opened unto them. And you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive that into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, maybe y'all can wake up in the middle of this sermon and go, Woo! Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead and get your Bibles and open them to the 20th proverb. Well, then you can leave that up there. Okay. Unless I determine that I've, I've, the people are just so deer and headlighted that they can't function. Proverbs 20. Verse 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. This will be our foundation text for our ministry along the next few services. Um, we're going to be teaching on how to be led by the spirit of God, how to be led by the spirit of God. Uh, very important, and especially in these days, at this hour, this time. Um, with the, the constant barrage of stuff, people being detracted by carnal and natural things, church people being detracted by these. That's, that's the real danger. We, we, the church is not, as a general rule, being led by the Spirit. Okay? We're so caught up with what's—and then this, this has been a strategy of the devil. This has not been um, just, just happened. This has been strategic. The enemy has strategically gotten the church, uh, if, and if you want to say particularly the American church, off track uh, with carnality and with uh, the things of the world and caught it with the things of the world. Um, it started, and let me say, it did not start with COVID-19. It started with only caring about self. We, we got to where, you know, we, we, we took the message of prosperity, biblical prosperity, and went into excess with it to the point that people were only concerned about coming to church or hearing from God or hearing ministries and, and sermons and stuff that uh, placated their conscience and guaranteed them super abundant blessings without any commitment to the things of the Spirit. I believe in the superabundant blessings of God. I believe in biblical prosperity. But I also believe in consecration and dedication to the things of God. That they don't fall on you, as Brother Hagin used to say, like ripe cherries off a tree. He used to say, some folks think they're going through life on flowery beds of ease. And nothing could be further from the truth. If you walk by faith, you're going to encounter stuff. Amen. But we have people come along and tell you that, you know, you were under grace, that you were going to be blessed no matter what you did. It didn't matter how you did life, how, what you did in life, you were going to be blessed because uh, it was automatic that you could live any way you wanted to live and you were going to be blessed. And so that set us up for coming into a place where now we're, we're uh, the, 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 uh, the upheaval and carnality. See, when you train yourself to be carnal, when things go into the upheaval spiritually, you will try to fight them out in carna with carnally, carnal weapons. Yet the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, when you train to be carnal and stuff happens, you're going to fight carnal. I wonder if I had an amen corner back here behind my balloons. 
Hallelujah. But if we're led by the Spirit, He will lead us and guide us into all truth. Isn't that right? He will teach us the ways of the Spirit. And you're going to fight your battles spiritually. And you're going to be led spiritually. And you're going to, you're going to be directed spiritually. And things will not always make sense in the natural when you're led by the Spirit. Hello. So let's, let's uh, begin this. First of all, the lamp of the Lord. The lamp of the Lord. We're talking about being led by the Spirit. Romans 8.14 says that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In other words, not children of God, but sons. Mature. Maturity comes when you are led by the Spirit. When you learn the voice of the Spirit and walk in the ways of God at the leading and guidance of the Spirit. Now, let me say something. That does not negate the Word of God because the Holy Ghost will lead you to the Word. He will teach you from the Word. He would disciple you through the Word. Amen. It won't just be manifestations of gifts. It won't just be hallelujahs and speaking in tongues and laying on hands and prophesying. There's going to be the Word of God. Amen. You can't get, it, you can't get them apart. They have to they work together. Amen. Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. And then our main text, the Spirit of man, the Spirit of man, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. <clears throat> this verse tells us that God will light, enlighten us or guide us through our spirits, not our bodies, not our minds. They're not the candle of the Lord. Our spirits are the candle of the Lord. Amen. God talks to us through our human spirits. Can you say amen? Why? God is a spirit. Jesus said they to come to him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit, not just a mental exercise, not an emotional exercise. Now, let me say this. Spiritual things can affect your emotions, but emotions can affect spiritual things and not in a good way. I just feel like, well, I just don't feel right to me. Well, your feelings will get you in trouble. Hello? Don't wake up tomorrow morning and look at your wife and say, I don't feel married. I'm going to go find me another woman. I don't have enough room on my schedule this week for a funeral. Yeah, that's right. Taps. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yeah, I know some of these women in this church. Some of them are Native American. Some of them just old country. Some of them are just, well, got a hawk knife that you don't know about. All right. So your spirit is the can. It's the light place that God illuminates. It's the place that God communes. Is your human spirit. Amen. And so if you're going to be led by the spirit, you've got to be, you've got to be spiritual. Now, I, listen, I, I, I read these, these, the world, you know, talk about people, oh, they're so spiritual. There's some type of psychic mind reader. They're spirit. No, they're not. They're demonized. They're trying to say in the sense that, you know, they've got some kind of gift from God. Yeah, little g. God of this world, Beelzebub, but not from heaven. Y'all remember the woman every year who used to give her psychic predictions? Whatever her name, Jean something or Jeannie something or whatever she was. Huh? Nixon? Dixon, 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 okay, D-I-X-O-N, all right, yeah, you should give her predictions. No comments from way back there. And she was right 40% of the time or something, boy, she had a gift. Well, he says better some of the other, most weather guys. We're not going to pick on weather guys today. All right. Man must learn. To, see, you need to understand, first of all, that your flesh and your mind are not the sum total of you. It's not the higher you. Okay. 
luminous beings we are. Not crude like, you know, Yoda. And it was true. We were luminous beings. God created us in light beings until the fall. Man is a triune, this exists in a triune existence. He is soul. He is spirit, soul, and body. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, and, I pray, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's three Greek words used here for these different things. Uh, spirit is pneuma, soul is suke, and uh, body is a soma. Okay? So your whole pneuma, suke, and soma be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is the pneuma that is the spirit, is, is, is the candle of the Lord. Your soul is a seat of, wit, of will, of intellect, of emotions. Your body is your earth suit. Got to have it to hang out down here. But you will exist with, with or without it. Amen. Man's eternal. In other words, once, once man is born, he, he, he will exist forever. Now, he doesn't, have a, he doesn't have an eternal beginning, but he will exist henceforth eternally. Whether in hell or heaven, it will, you know, but he will not cease to exist. Genesis 126, 27 says, Let God said, and Elohim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Talking about the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. After our likeness, that they may have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Well, what, how did God? God created man a spirit being. Amen? In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit. If God created us in his image, he created us spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Philippians 1, 23 and 24. Paul talks about this. Let's listen to the, the, uh, the fact uh, that what Paul talks about, we're not a body. <clears throat> and you read this in here. For I am in a strict between two, having a desire to depart and be with the Lord Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Now, what he's saying, I can depart and be the Lord, but I need to hang out in the flesh. So you will exist outside the flesh or in the flesh. It just determines where you hang out at. But you see, when you're in your body, you can be here. Amen. You can go into outer space in, earth, in, a, in a space suit. You can function in outer space in a space suit. Keeps your body warm, gives you oxygen, keeps your body pressurized. You can go and function. They can do spacewalks in a space suit. Take them out of that space suit, they can't function. Your earth suit is your body. God created this realm to have a physical body. You had to have a physical body to function here. Without it, you can't stay here. You can't manifest and hang out and run around, do stuff. So you got an earth suit. Paul says, I'm at a difficult place whether to depart, leave his body, and because he was born again, he would go be with the Lord. So if you die without Christ, you don't go to be with the Lord. You don't get to go to purgatory. You don't get to hang around, try to fix, the, fix it later. You go to hell. Bottom line, there is, there is no other way. It's heaven or hell. There's not an in-between. Okay? Then that's, that's just the way it is. You got heaven, you got hell, and nothing in between. Well, I guess what you You got earth. That you could be here in a body. Okay? And you have to make your decision about where you're going to be when you leave that body before you leave that body. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Okay. And um, so Paul's going to live, he's going to exist. Let's put it like this way. He, you're going to exist whether in the body or out of the body. Once you're born, once you're created, you will exist whether in the body or out of the body. 
Hallelujah. You know, it's not a matter of that, you know, uh, well, I'm going to go hang out in purgatory and I'm, or I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to come back as a, as a uh, lower animal because I didn't get it all fixed up right, you know, uh, reincarnation. No. You, if, you're, if you're here, your human spirit existing in a body, you leave that body. If you've, made, if you've accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you are with the Lord. If you did not, you're going to be with the devil. Can you be, I mean, people think right this week, people are talking about how Rush Limbaugh is in hell. Rush Limbaugh confessed Jesus as Lord. So about three years ago, he actually accepted Jesus as his Lord. But people hate him so much, despise him so much, that he's going to bust hell out of I hate to tell you, the people are talking the way, the way they talk, they're probably ones going to be there and not him. They're going to be real surprised. Are y'all here? You've gone home. No. Nope. Well, who did Paul say would depart? He said, I will depart. If I depart, if I depart, I will be with the Lord. So your spirit leaves the body, it goes to be with the Lord. Amen. Can you say glory to God? Hallelujah. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, For which cause we faint not, but though the, our outward man perish, <clears throat> the inward man is renewed day by day. The inward man never wears out. Why? Because it's renewed day by day. The outward man wears out. Hang around long enough, you'll find out. Hello? Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't bounce as good as I used to. I mean, we used to do, I mean, if you played football, you remember doing running in place and then dropping flat out on your chest and then pump, bumping back up and, and running in place again. And then you bounce, you just flop right down on your chest. It was to get used to getting hit and falling on the ground. I mean, you're, you're here running like this and then you just go and they say down. And you just, I mean, you just like leap out and go boom. We didn't lay there. You know, full gear. I mean, which, I mean, everything on. You, you hop right back up and brrr, you're, And the coaches just let's see. Up, they call them up downs. You know, up down, up down, up. I mean, you're going. Brrr. Boy, I bounce good. I mean, dear Lord, I don't even want to think about it today. I mean, just thinking about it makes me think about it. Give me a Tylenol. <laughs> I'm being silly now. I know some Word of Faith people out there cringing. Oh, he's making a negative confession. I, I, I haven't trained like I did when I was 16, 8, 17, 18 years old. Hello? I'm not in the physical condition I was then. Now, that's my own fault. Uh huh? But I don't bounce as good. I used to, I played outfield. Yeah! Cap just got tossed. I used to throw penalty flags on him when he first came. Now I just throw him out of the game. But when I played baseball, um, the, the team loved to do stuff just to see me do it because I was crazy. My nickname was Wild Man. Now, we had a breakaway fence in high school, you know, because that's just how they did it. In, you know, so we had a breakaway fence. It was a fence on, on rockers. When you hit it, if you ran into it, it'd roll over. I went through the fence all the time chasing fly balls. I don't mean like run to the fence and grab it. And I've just ran through the fence. Okay? Okay. Um, one time the coach hit the ball down the sideline. I'm going, it got too close to the big chain link fence, the eight-foot high one. Ran into it wide open. Shing, boom. I bounced right back up and ready to go again. Hit another one. So bad, we were doing indoor practice one day. I, we, we were doing like drills, and so infield drills. I was an outfielder, so we had to run the bases. I ran, stumbled when I got to first base, and ran head first into the, the bleachers that were pushed in. The whole team came here with the hats off to check the status of the bleacher. Well, praise the Lord. Now, when I'm all that to say this, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Running, running into walls is not my, you know, I did. I haven't I've ever told you all this. I used to beat lockers in with my head to intimidate people. 
actually the cinder block walls in the school, people start t trash talking me. I just turn around and go, bam. Oh, yeah. I know somebody thinking, well, now we know. We understand now. <laughs> See, they may be stronger than you, but they don't want to mess with crazy. And when they saw me hit my head on a cinder block, block wall, they decided crazy was something they didn't want to mess with. But yeah, and before football games, I would take my helmet off and beat lockers in with my head. Let's go play football. I don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. The outward man perishes. It gets older. Why do we have to have comments from the cheap seats? But the inward man, see, my inward man is renewed day by day. He's strengthened with might and the power of the Spirit, glory to God. Can you say amen? The Word of God entering and the Holy Ghost working in me. It renews thy inner man, hallelujah. He gets, he's getting renewed day by day. He's not wearing out. He's getting stronger. He's getting better. But that's who God communes with is that inner man, praise God. Amen? Jesus said in John 3, 3, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, natural. What, what does a woman do right before she gives birth? Breaks water. And of the Spirit, that's the new birth. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Telling us, Jesus tells us, just because you're a part of the brotherhood of man, and as people like to say, we're all God's children, well, in the sense that you're part of the creation that God, you know, you're, you're part of what God created and started and has been, you know, um, carried on through reproduction, you know, well, in that sense, yeah, but that's really not biblical, that terminology, okay? All creation is not the children of God. As a matter of fact, Jesus made it clear when he told the Pharisees, he said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill over in John chapter 8. Verse 44, okay? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. So we're not all God's children in that sense. No? He said if you're born in the flesh, that's okay, but you've got to be born in the spirit too. Or you won't see the kingdom of God. Amen? He could not enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again or born from above, born anew. Different translations translate that differently. But born again, what do you mean? You have to experience not only a natural birth, you have to have a spiritual birth and be born again. Hallelujah, by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of man is the part of man that receives eternal life, that zoe from God. It is God, is man's spirit <coughs> that has made a new creation, not your body or your mind. God doesn't do anything about our bodies or our minds, we do. We are instructed through the Word of God to renew our minds. We are instructed through the Word of God to keep our bodies under. Amen? We are born again spirit beings. Hallelujah. Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 3, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now, biblically speaking, the heart and the spirit are the same when, when in reference to man. We're talking about the heart of man or the spirit of man. We're talking about the same thing. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Peter talks about it's the hidden man of the heart. Praise God. Thank God for the hidden man of the heart. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Let's look in verse 13. For well, whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge. And if one died for all, then all were dead. 
and all that he all he died for that they should live should be not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known Christ after the flesh yeah now henceforth know we him no more in other words we knew him when he walked the earth in the flesh but now we know him no more that way we know him after the spirit okay don't you love how King Jimmy puts it where you kind of go anybody ever get your head twisted around when the King Jimmy gets to going real good hallelujah therefore and one preacher one time said well so you see the word therefore stop and see what it's there for okay we know him no more after the flesh it's a spiritual thing we're talking about is now we've moved from flesh to things to spiritual things if any man be in Christ he's a new creature one translation says a new species of being that never existed before hallelujah a new creation therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creation a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things become new and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Let's stop there for a second. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Who, how many here are born again? Jesus is your Lord. All right. 100%. Okay. Y'all remember the day you got saved? You accepted Jesus as your Lord. I can tell you where I was and what I was doing. I was at the altar of the first Pentecostal Holiness Church at the corner of Brinkley Road and Plaza Drive. On July the, um, the 11th, 1979. Hallelujah. Four days later, I went and got baptized in the Holy Ghost. That next Wednesday night, July 18th, Janie came and got to church, got born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost all at the same time. Hallelujah. Now that was, I know where I was. I remember getting born again. But you know what I didn't happen to me when I got born again? I didn't forget my name. I still knew who I was. But he said, all things have passed away. So you've got to read the whole context. The context is talking about we know we're no more after the flesh, we know we're after the spirit. Talking about spiritually, old things passed away. Not your mind. I mean, if you, you look, you didn't, I, I, I never saw anybody go to the altar too skinny or too overweight and get up completely perfectly shaped. You didn't get a new body. Wouldn't that be glorious? We put Weight Watchers out of business. Come to church and get saved. You'll be in perfect shape tomorrow. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Then you could do up-downs. Yeah. They have doing up-downs in church. Boom. Boom. Up-down for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. You guys are a tough crowd today. I mean, are y'all still hung up on the building fund thing? Yeah, y'all act like you're not even here. I think Brother Bill still looks like a, look like a, a, a cow at a new gate. <clears throat> old things passed away. What? Spiritual things. The old man. The man who is spiritually alienated from God, the spirit of man. The spirit of man, which you are, is a part that's born again. And when you get born again, old things pass away. Like that nature of the old man, which is sin, which is union and harmony with Satan, passes away, and the new man is born of God hallelujah and becomes a new creature <clears throat> and everything about that man the in that spirit man is of God all things are of God he's alive unto God the nature has been changed he's still got a body and it's been trained to be flaky it's been trained to be carnal your mind has been disciplined to think one way. It's got to be retrained. It's called renewing the mind with the Word of God. Be not conformed to this world. Remember? Over in Hebrews chapter 11 or 12. Verse 
No. Is that Romans 12? Yeah, Romans 12. Be not conformed to this world. Amen? Let me, let me tell you who he's talking to here. Verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, he's talking to the church, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. The word reasonable is better translated from the Greek spiritual service. You present your body a living sacrifice, which is a spiritual service. In other words, you keep your flesh under control, which is totally opposite of these doctors that come out and say, you can do whatever you want to do, you're still going to heaven. That, that, that we're not trying to make the point you're going to die and go to hell as soon as you do something wrong. The point is, God says to present that body as, as, as a sacrifice because it wants to do stuff that ain't right. You probably found that out. Listen, there are days I revert to 18 and want to jack slap somebody. And I had to put my body under. Hello. <clears throat> I mean, I'm serious. I'm talking about, I want to walk. You, you start, you, you, I mean, I, I get, get kids in school sometimes, and they tell me, F you. You don't think something doesn't come on me? Hello? Son? Son? No, I ain't your daddy, because if I was your daddy, you wouldn't talk like that. Boy, I mean, you want to, you just want to take them and put them in, and step, put them on the ground and put your, 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 your foot on their neck and stop them. Now, say, so get in and talk to me like you should. But you don't. You got to control your body. You have to control your body. Oh, yeah. Don't think it don't come on you. It's like one of those cartoons on television, you know, where they're walking and going, Hello. But you have to present that body a living sacrifice. You've got to control your flesh. Hello. Amen. See, there's some people who just don't know how lucky they are. Or blessed they are that I control my flesh. I'm going to tell you one time, somebody popped off at, popped off of me at, a, at, a, at Wendy's. They supposed to put cheese on the burger. I Jamie, Jamie opens up. And, and then they go stick cold cheese right on top of it and hand it back to me. And they, they actually threw it at me. That was about 30 years ago. I've seasoned some. He don't know how close. I mean, he really does. He don't know how close I came that day to drag him across the counter. I mean, I was hot, but I controlled myself. I keep thinking, it's a good thing I don't have these things in the paper for people to go back and look up. Preacher pulls Wendy's server over counter, beats them. Oh, praise the Lord. The, the real good one is I didn't drag that preacher across the counter. They tore our church up. Oh, y'all, I love you, brother. <laughs> ah, how you doing? No, you got off your body a living sacrifice. Now, I'm being real here, and I... You know I'm talking to you too, because you've got to be real too. You've had to face situations where you were just a, it took, it took, it took Jesus on the inside, the Holy Ghost on the outside, and the Father standing and saying, stop it! Pull you back in. Yeah. Well, as a Christian, as a believer, we have to control our flesh, don't we? Amen? <clears throat> I said Amen. How did I get up on all that? I don't know. But my, but my flesh didn't come new. Boy, what wouldn't it have been nice if your flesh had been made new? Wouldn't it have been nice if your, your mind had been made perfectly new? I mean, you got born again, and you were like Adam in the garden. It was, it was absolutely renewed, perfect. I mean, didn't have any trouble with anything. Your body was completely under, and your spirit was born again. I mean, everything was just left. But no, we get left with the cleanup. Not helpless. God gave us his word. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen.
so you begin to control and to govern the other spheres of your existence through the renewing of the mind with the word you're born you're born again so now you're empowered amen greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world by the holy ghost amen so second corinthians is not talking about our bodies talking about our spirits Woo. i'm just getting warmed up here glory to god glory to god we have to learn to be spirit conscious more aware of our human spirit than we are our body meaning it takes a higher precedent amen again i pray god your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the lord notice that spirit is listed first i have a spirit i possess a soul i live in a body Spirit consciousness will help your faith because faith is of the Spirit. It's not, a, it's not a carnal thing. It's not a mental thing. Amen? There is a difference between the spi Listen, your, your spirit and your soul are not the same. Now, in the Old Testament, a lot of times they, would, they didn't really have a revelation of the, of the difference, and so the word soul was used interchangeably for spirit. You've got to look at the context to see what it's talking about. But in the New, a distinction takes place. What? Higher revelation. Amen. See, God had to control them through what? They had to control, had to control them. He had to control them through their flesh because they weren't born again. That's why the law was given to control their flesh. Under the New Testament, we're to live out of our spirits. Our spirits are to govern and control our flesh by walking with God, having supremacy over that. But your soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, and the emotions is not the same thing as your spirit. And how do you know that? Well, Hebrews 4, 12. For the Word of God is quick, that's, that's old English for a, a, a living thing, and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder, that means the separating, of the soul and the spirit. That if they were the same thing, they couldn't be separated. You can't separate what is one. Dividing asunder the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. So, although your soul will remain with your spirit, they are separate. Your soul does not get born again. Your soul gets renewed. Your spirit gets born again. It does not get renewed. You do, your spirit, let me, let me say this. This is a, it's a terrible terminology we use in the church. We talk about converts. Your, 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 I sound like uh, Medea, your, your spirit does not get converted. It does not convert to Christianity. Your spirit is born again from death unto life. Once under the authority and dominion and the rule of Satan as your father, you're born again, become a new creature, and God becomes your father. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. So your spirit, we use that term all the time in church. We need converts, you know. We need conversions. No, you need born agains. That's the biblical terminology. See, you can convert to a religion and not be born you can convert to Christianity and not be born again you can you can follow the practices of you know uh, you know I mean in our liturgical churches you can do the responsive readings and this kind of thing in our um, <clears throat> in, in you know like the high churches you can do all the catechisms and all this kind of stuff in you know evangelical churches you can come in and you can shake the preacher's hand and get water baptized but if you're not born again Converting to the practices of Christianity is not enough to get you into heaven. That is works. Jesus said ye must be born again. How do you do that? Romans tells us that we confess him as Lord and believe that God's raised from the dead will be saved. You're born again. Not converted, born again. See, conversion is a mental 
exercise in the realm of religion. I'm following the teachings of Christ. Well, following the teachings of Christ because they're good and moral is, uh, in, in a natural sense, admirable, but doesn't get you into heaven. You can see, you see, the Bible even tells us that doing the law wouldn't get you there. As a matter of fact, the law was given to prove you couldn't do it. <clears throat> if you could follow the whole law and do everything the law said and never break one point of the law, you could have gotten saved. <laughs> but you can't. As a matter of fact, if you miss it on one point, you're guilty of the whole thing. All you got to do is mess up one time over here, and you mess, you, you ruin the whole thing. The law was given to prove <clears throat> you couldn't get saved through your efforts. So simply by following the teachings of Christ is not enough to get you born again. Amen? It's, a, it's, a, it's an act of faith, confession of your mouth, and acceptance of the work of Christ. So then becomes by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. So your spirit must be born again. Say amen. You will at that time need to begin to renew in your mind because your mind still thinks stupid. If you don't renew your mind, it'll still think, think stupid. That's why some baby Christians say some of the dumbest stuff you've ever heard. That's okay. Give them time. Get them under the Word. Disciple them in Christ. Let them see what the Word says. Let the Word of God renew their mind. And eventually, they'll begin to, say, they'll, they'll begin to change. They'll still have their moments. Ask Peter. Three and a half years of walking with Jesus, he's cussing and lying. Amen. Am I right? So the Word of God will start. So let's, let's look at it this way. There are three realms in which we can, we can communicate and function. The spirit realm, the spirit of man contacts the spirit realm. With the body, man contacts the physical realm. And with the soul, contacts the intellectual realm. Okay? You contact the spiritual realm with your spirit, the physical realm with your body, and the intellectual realm with your mind, your soul. Now, only one happened instantly in being transformed from a fallen state to a relationship with God. That was your spirit. You were born again. But even as that, you're a newborn babe. As newborn babes desire, desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. That's what the Word of God says. Amen. So it takes time to renew your mind. But the more you let the, your human spirit grows in God and your mind is renewed to the Word of God, the more control you will exercise over the body of your flesh with the more empowerment to say no. Amen? That's why it's important you get into a church, a good church. Not a happy, clappy church that just tells you it don't matter, you guys are going to bless you anyhow. The one that will train you. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, you just, we all get a letter today that says you're being shipped off to Iraq and you're going to be um, you're going to be Marines or Army and you're going to be on the front line. But before you go, we're sending you to training camp. But you get to choose which training camp you get to go to. You can go to the training camp that will put you through the grind that will teach you how to use your weapon, how to break it down in the field and how to put it back together, how to use tactical um, maneuvers to uh, outflank the enemy. Or you can go to the training camp that has a, a bunch of guys who think you don't need any of that, that, you know, just give them a weapon and they're going to be okay because they've got a gun. Now, in reality, which one do you want to go to? Now, your body may not want to go to Paris Island and go through all the stuff that the Marines go through out there. Hello? You may not want to go through the physical gruel. 
You may not want to sit in a warehouse that's completely black. That they, they shut the door and put gas in there, and you got to break your weapon down and put it back together in the gas in the dark. Huh? Not fun. Yeah, not fun at all. You may want to go to the one where they just say, here, we're here, soldier, here's what you're done. We're going to send you on over there. You know, you know have a good time. You're going to be all right. Because you're a U.S. Army band. You're a United States Marine. And the Navy will give you a ride. I'm just picking on Cap. The Cap was Navy. Uh, what's that? The smart ones. They just gave him a ride and then stayed out sea and shot big bombs over there. <laughs> Joe, was, Joe was a grunt, weren't you? You were 101st Airborne? So that's out in California, isn't it? Or, or Georgia? Kentucky, 101st out of Kentucky. Okay. Joe was 101st. I didn't know you were Airborne. Wow, Joe, you learn something new every day. He was Army. Okay, you went to Lebanon, you were a, an Army guy. 101st. Ura, well, that's not Ura, that's Marines. What do y'all say? Go get them, okay. <laughs> Let me ask you, Joe, if you were going into service and they were going to send you over to be part of the Airborne and you never, they didn't teach, teach you how to jump out of a helicopter, is that the one you want to be with? Or you want to be with the one that's going to teach you how to jump out of the helicopter? Okay. He might shoot you in the back. See, too many Christians want, want all this, this stuff without any growth. We, we think it's just going to happen. It doesn't happen. Your spirit gets born again, but you renew your mind to the Word of God. And you keep your flesh under. And that's, that's process. That's time. Amen? But the more you do, the more spiritual you will become. Because the more you empower the voice of your spirit to govern and to rule over your being, the clearer it becomes. And when God speaks to your spirit, you're more in tune to hear him. Amen? Amen? So it's not just something you dream up in your head. I see too many people dream stuff up in their head. And then go out and go, God told me. You just dreamed it up in your head. How do you, because it's not even biblical. God told me, I, I mean, I like that woman that called me and wanted me to um, help her get the man in church that wouldn't talk to her, but God had showed her they were going to get married. And after a 10, 15-minute conversation, I finally got, she let the cat out of the bag. I said, well, why can't you go talk to your pastor or to the elders in your church? Well, he's married. If you'd read your Bible, you'd have known God didn't tell you you're going to get that man. Hello? Yeah. And I told her she had a pizza dream. You had, you had indigestion last night. You had too much pizza. Because that wasn't God. She didn't like my phone calls. She ended real quick. Call up, dial a pastor to try to find somebody to tell her she had heard from God. She did. Low, little G, Beelzebub. The maggot God. Lord of the flies. Hello? That's maggot doctrine right there. Amen. So, Paul even said in 1 Corinthians 14, 14, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. My spirit is gaining uh, um edification. My mind isn't. It says in the Amplified Bible, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit prays within me prays, but my mind is unproductive. <clears throat> so we have to, we have to realize this. I'm, I'm going to try to finish. Um, <laughs> John 7, 37, Jesus in the last day stood up in the feast 
And Christ saith, If a man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, that they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now remember, he told us, told us about another place, that the, that the, uh, the life of God in this would be a well springing up unto everlasting life. See, the new birth is that well. You're born again, everlasting life. The baptism in the Holy Ghost is that spirit flowing out of you, rivers of living water. But where's the flood? It comes out of your spirit. And we know that when you pray in unknown tongues, your spirit is edified. He that prayeth and speaketh in an unknown tongue, hallelujah, edifieth himself. It also says in that same passage of Scripture, that same, that same theme there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that he speaks in an unknown, unknown tongue. His mind is unfruitful or unproductive. He doesn't, doesn't understand. Amen? So it's not helping your mind. Praying, praying in tongues does not help your mind. Paul went on to say this. What is it then? I'll pray with the Spirit and with the understanding. I'll sing with the Spirit and I'll sing with the understanding. Amen. Can you say glory to God? Hallelujah. When you pray in tongues, your spirit's active in tune with God. It's the atmosphere which God can uh, direct our spirits. But it does not do a thing for our soul. You still, you, you still pray in, in understanding. Amen? Now, I'm, I'm going to stop here. Uh, we, we're kind of laying the groundwork for that we're spirit, that we commune with God through the spirit. We're going to get into being led by the spirit over the next couple weeks. We've got to be spiritually discerning, spiritually in tune. Can you say amen? Amen? Uh, it's important for us as believers to hear from God, to be led by God. And I can tell you, your flesh can get in the way. Your mind can get in the way. Remember God told Abram to get thee out of that country, out of that kid, away from thy father's house and go to a place that I will show you. Now, he tried several different places along the way. Thought they were good, but they weren't the right place. Amen? He even lied a couple times. Semi-lied. Told his wife to tell him that she's his sister. It was his half-sister or something. Because he thought they were going to kill him to get her. Wow. God's leading you down there and he's going to get you killed for they can have your wife. Amen. God will move you in a direction sometimes and you, you think it's one thing, but he's, he's, he's going to be steering it in a different place. And you don't see it coming until it comes. I've had that happen too many times. I remember our first house we... We were going to buy second house. We were we had bought our house. We were, it was uh, we were outgrowing it over there. Some of y'all knew where that was over off of Randleman Road, um, off of Glendale over there in High Point in Greensboro. And um, but we were starting to look, and we uh, we had really got where we needed a new house. We, and we looked, we found a, a build it was building, and uh, we thought this was our price range. And we we started we we were in a contract with a contingency to sell our house by a certain time and. Etc. 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 And we went off to Europe on our first trip. The whole family went to Europe with me so on a missions trip. Now I had been over um, to Estonia and stuff several times by myself. This is the first trip the family went, and um, and so we had gone to Europe, gone to Germany, and gone to France on that trip. Hallelujah! I, was, I mean, we're talking Germany, um, Heidelberg, uh, down to Basel, Switzerland, all the way up to Paris, back over, back down to Heidelberg. And we went through Austria now to do it. We, went through, we drove through um, um, Innsbruck, all that, drove through the Alps, all that stuff. And, uh, and we taught, taught in Bible schools and so forth. Got back home, went to the house, and they had changed it from a custom house to a spec house. You know what the spec house is? Contract to build speculation houses. They build it real neutral, real what, so that somebody come in and buy it, and then they can change stuff later. We had customized. We had, cut, we had different color countertops, different color flooring, flat ceilings, no sprayed ceilings, white with white. You know, like, I, 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 now you may love antique white. I don't. Y'all remember the 70s and 80s? Everything got painted antique white. The trim and the walls. I like bright white trim and, and different color walls, you know. And uh, so if my walls are white, then I can come back and paint them a different color. But the trim, I don't have to paint all the trim in the house. 
You can understand that. Well, we come back, they totally spec the house out. We had white countertops, white cabinets, and white floor in the kitchen. We're supposed to have like a green countertop with a green floor with white cabinets. I mean, it looked like Mr. Clean had gone through there. Put sunglasses on just to walk in the room. <clears throat> Sprayed the ceilings with the popcorn instead of flat. And um, we went to the office the next morning and said, what have y'all done? Well, you didn't sell your house by such and such a day. But you can still buy it? I said, no, we're not buying this house. I want my money back. My, I want my down payment back. Hello? And so we took that back. And we, we went and made some adjustments on, on the house we were living in, kind of fixed it up and stuff. And then, about, not quite a year later, we found the house we're in now. Now, this house is way better than the other one. It would have been, been a nice home. You got understand what I'm saying? The other one would have been a nice home. It would have. But this one was so much better. The yard was so much better. The, the way that, you know, the houses were positioned was so much better. It had side load garage instead of front. Which when you have front load, you can put the houses closer together. Okay? So when you got side load, you got to get enough driveway out, that's out the side to come in. Okay? And that's all the way down the street because then that way you get more space between the houses. The front load, they can put them right up, I mean, 10 feet, 10, 15 feet apart. And that's kind of how that was. But, you know, we were, we were satisfied. We were okay. But it just didn't work out. Well, see, we were moving, but God was steering. And so... We're going we're gonna to have things like that happen, we have that, and we have them happen spiritually. Listen, think about this now. Uh, you know, this is, this is being led by the Spirit. I'm, I'm kind of moving on being led by the Spirit out of the fact that we're, we're spirit beings. December of 2018, following Christmas, the Lord spoke to me and said, how much debt are you in? Y'all know the story because you were here. And I, went, and I said, I don't know. He said, well, find out. Carolina's playing hockey right now. But I, I've learned that when the Lord says to do something, you better do it. So I got up, went up and went to the desk that was behind me. I was in the bonus room. Got our big TVs in the bonus room. And uh, kind of kept looking at the hurricane game. Got out all the bills and everything and added up our debt. There were over $35,580 in the hole, which was really good because when we lost the business part lease, we were $85,000 in the hole. trying to keep paying that $4,000 monthly so we didn't have the people anymore, didn't have the money coming in. And, but if we walked out the door, I was personally responsible for it. I was doing business as Ed Taylor. I would have been on the books for the $48,000 a year that was due in lease. Oh, yeah. So it just, it was, there was no good scenario there. But we had, it had come down to thirty-five, which was like, woo! But still, woo. Because we, uh, we were just like constantly paying, you know, constantly paying, constantly paying, trying to get that, you know, get it out of debt, get it out of debt. And just, it, was just, it, was a, it was a battle. And uh, he said, gave me the plan. Remember, he gave me the plan. And so we got in 11, in 10 and a half months, we went, it was supposed to be 18 months. The Lord said 18-month plan is you'll be out of debt in 18 months. We were out in 10 and a half. Well, then, we, you know, we moved into doing the building fund this past summer. And now... We're $65,000 in the building fund. He's leading us into something. I can't see everything he's doing. Amen? I don't know everything he's doing. I do know crooks and turns take place, but you know that's okay. He knows everything, the beginning from the end. Amen? And so he knows where we're going to be, when we're going to be there, and what we're going to be like. But he's doing it. He's done this to position us into something that we have no idea we could get there. Amen? But it started, let me say, it started with a word to my spirit, because I sat, definitely won't think about the church debt watching the Hurricanes play hockey. I was thinking about who was going to score, if they were going to stop the next team from scoring, if they were going to win. Because that was the year Carolina started out kind of slow, but they got hot. And boy, they got hot. I mean, how was a firecracker? Ended up in the Eastern Conference Finals that year. I mean, they got smoking hot. And um, it started out with the word, how much debt are you in? 
I didn't know we were going to go from $35,580 in debt to $65,000 in the building fund in two years. You say, was it 2018? Christmas of 2018. January the 1st, we were still $35,580 in debt of 2019. So 25 months later, you know what kind of turnaround that is? 35 and 65? That's a $100,000 turnaround. And we've got money in the bank outside the building fund. We're talking $100,000 plus turnaround. Because God said, do this. And we jumped on it and we just said, well, you know, and I didn't know that it was going to lead to something, you know, to, to anything different. I just knew we'd get out of debt. And I would say, I, I knew, I knew he's up to something. Amen? So we're going to walk with him. And we're going to watch the blessings. Glenda, oh, boy, you, you're you way ahead of the game back there. I was say, put it back up there, Brother Bill. Are you breathing? Okay. Let's put last Sunday's up there. Because this is where we were last Sunday. It was that third, not quite a third of the way, is it? And today, what's that, Belinda? That is God. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people. We're going to learn to walk according to the Spirit, follow our spirits, be led of the Spirit. And walk with you into your purposes and plans in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Well, so glad you could join us today. Those watching by the internet, thank you for being with us. Uh, until we're back together again, uh, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Let's break it down. Get out the door. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen.